Hey everyone, thank you for joining us for today's webinar hosted by Cosvox. I'm really excited to be here with you all today to talk about something that I'm extremely passionate about. I've been working in fundraising for about 10 years now and for the last three years here with the team at Cosvox. But back in 2009, when I took my first steps into the office of a nonprofit to work in my first job at a nonprofit, it was on this specific topic, all about monthly giving. I was on a team that was responsible for helping to grow and really maintain our monthly giving program. And so I'm excited to see so many other people that are excited. We've had people all across the country from a variety of different industries all come together and say, this is something that we want to learn more about. And I think it's because the world we're fundraising in today has just fundamentally shifted and changed. And the more challenging thing is that the world you're fundraising in is always evolving and, and always changing now because we're living in what we call the connected economy. And the connected economy has a lot of benefits for nonprofits, but a lot of new challenges that have come up. And as we've talked to fundraisers over the past few months, but even over the past 18 months, as we've been trying to dig in and really understand some of the challenges and ways that we can help nonprofits specifically uh, here at Cosvox, we've learned that this connected economy has also created a lot of challenges for nonprofits, for organizations. And I feel like this quote by Seth Godin really sums up what's going on, where some organizations are thriving in this new connected economy, where power has shifted from organizations to individuals. We're more connected than we ever have been. Anyone, anywhere, at any time can connect with anybody anywhere in the world just using our phones. Information is now ubiquitous. So organizations that previously provided a lot of value by being a conduit for their audience or for their population or segment supporters uh, is no longer necessary because people have direct access to the causes that they deeply care about. And so some organizations are thriving from this chaos, some are kind of unprepared, and some will merely fight it and lose. And I think the reality is, is that a lot of organizations are on the second half of Seth's quote. Because the reality is, is donor acquisition costs are skyrocketing. Donor retention has flatlined at less than 50% for most organizations. And this really leaves fundraisers kind of frustrated. But one thing that we've seen is that there's hope in all of this. There's one standout fundraising tactic that smart nonprofits are using to grow giving sustainably. And that topic is what we're gonna be focusing in on for the next 35, 40 minutes, and that's monthly giving campaigns. Of all the different categories of individual giving, monthly giving campaigns are a category that continues to grow and help organizations grow along with that. Revenue from monthly giving grew over 40% in the past few years, and participation levels are nearly at 45% across millennials, boomers, and Gen Xers. And donor retention rates for monthly donors are up to over 80%. Some people see 95% donor retention. So it's incredible how, even though we're living in kind of a world that's shifting and changing, and fundraisers like you and I and others are kind of trying to get their grounding and figure out how do we effectively grow giving? How do we make an impact in the world in this new reality? How do we grow that? And I think monthly giving campaigns are something that are underutilized because of one specific thing. Monthly giving campaigns are really tough to get right and notoriously difficult to grow well. So that's what today is gonna to be all about. We're gonna spend the next 30 or 40 minutes really untangling this complexity. And I'm gonna highlight seven proven tactics that will help you grow your monthly giving campaign just like the pros. And since we're gonna be spending a little bit of time together today, I wanna to make sure I introduce myself. And so 
A little background, my name is Noah Barnett, and like I mentioned, I run marketing here at Cosbox. These are my three boys. Uh, the one on the left is most like me, and his name happens to be Noah too. And for those that don't know much about Cosbox, Cosbox is a leading online fundraising platform that equips nonprofits like yourself with everything you need, the software, best practices, and hands-on help to run wildly successful peer-to-peer -peer campaigns, monthly giving campaigns, crowdfunding campaigns, peer-to-peer -peer events like walkathons. And we like to consider Cosbox as your fundraising sidekick, where we're providing you the tools to be successful, but we're also coming along behind you and are there with you so that you feel confident and can hit your goals. And that's across a bunch of different types of campaigns online. And then we obviously put all of that together so you have visibility into all of your fundraisings. And that, the fact that we've been able to work with over 1,500 nonprofits every year and help them raise millions of dollars over the past 10 years, or almost 10 years, has given us a credi incredible visibility and insight into the very topic that we're talking about today, which is monthly giving. Because not only have I had experience personally at working and helping to grow monthly giving campaigns, but our team has had the experience of watching growing nonprofits use monthly giving effectively um, to really help increase the amount of money they raise, but also to advance their impact and grow their donor base. And so a lot of the stuff we're sharing today is not just arbitrary, but it's based on observations and research that we've seen, but also in what we've personally experienced as we've helped grow programs as well. And so we're gonna start off by kind of setting the groundwork. I think one thing that I hear often when it comes to monthly giving, and, and some of you kind of affirm this in our pre-webinar uh, questionnaire, where I said, hey, have you used monthly giving before? Or are you currently using monthly giving? And I pushed back on some of you and said, how is that going? And some of you said, yeah, we tried it, but it didn't really work. Others said, yeah, we tried it, but you know, not very well. Some said we haven't tried it. And the thing I find when I'm talking to those nonprofits is that there's kind of a lack of foundation to why monthly giving is so important. And so to kind of set the groundwork before we dive into the seven tactics, which is kind of the next segment of today's presentation, I wanted to give you five reminders of why monthly giving is a must for you and your organization in 2019. Whether that's launching a new monthly giving program because you've never done it before, or reigniting a fire and kind of building momentum behind a monthly giving program that you already have, or maybe even breathing life into your monthly giving program, because we see that monthly giving programs that actually have texture and life to them are the ones that are more successful. And what I mean by life, we'll get to in the next segment. But these are the five reminders or reasons why, and this is a great tool to be able to share with your board of directors or your boss to kind of justify why this is so important and a must in 2019. And I will be sharing these slides. So you can take these next five slides and just hand them to whoever you need to kind of prove the value to, or maybe hang them up for yourself so that you are reminded why monthly giving is a must in 2019. So let's kind of dive into this. So key benefit number one is that monthly giver, givers or people that are participating in recurring giving campaigns have a higher lifetime value. A 2017 report found that recurring donors are worth up to four times more than one-time donors over the life of their giving. With smaller organizations, like many of the ones that you guys are helping to lead and grow, see close or closer to 11 times more of the value from their monthly donors. And that's not simply just because they're giving on a monthly basis, but they're giving on a monthly basis, which is bringing them, or there is kind of indicating that they're more engaged in your cause but then they also give to other things and their giving isn't just restricted to their monthly giving, but because they're engaged with you, because they have what mirrors like a subscription to Netflix to you, they're more likely to pay attention to other things that are going on, attend events, be a part of the work that you're doing. And that's where you're getting that four times, 11 times multiple. But regardless of the stats, whether it's four or 11 or three or five or seven, the simple truth is that recurring donors give more. And so by onboarding people into a recurring giving program, you're going to increase the lifetime value that you're gonna get from your donors. And I saw this first 
hand and I'll share a little bit more about that as we dive through today. The second key benefit that we see is that there's boosted retention. So first year retention rates average around 23% for typical donors according to the Fundraising Effectiveness Project. However, recurring donor recurring donors are usually retained at 52% in year one. So there's a lot of pushback sometimes like, oh, people might give for a year, but then they're gonna drop off, so it's just not worth our efforts. The fact is it's almost double the retention rate between monthly donors or recurring donors and typical one-time donors. So if you're struggling with donor retention or to gain kind of loyalty and engagement from your supporter base, it might be that you're focused on one-time gifts, which may be easier for you to get someone to commit to. Um, that's still relative, but let's just say that's true for argument's sake. But you're still losing them at double the rate. And so by introducing monthly giving, by leading with monthly giving, um, you can increase and boost your retention rates. And I think this is the biggest thing here, and I saw this firsthand when I was working, I was running growth for a nonprofit, is that if you zoom out, which I think as fundraisers, we have to admit that we don't do that often because we're in the weeds and there's so many demands on our attention. But if you expand this out and zoom out, recurring donors are five times more likely to be giving um, compared to one-time donors. And this idea that it's double in year one, but it's five times when you zoom out, plays into the key benefit number one, which is that the lifetime value of a monthly donor um, is significantly higher than that of a one-time donor over the lifetime of their giving. Even though they might be giving a small amount up front, they're giving so frequently and they're engaged with your cause that you boost value and you increase overall giving levels. The third key benefit here has nothing to do with you, but what we've seen in reports like the Science of Giving is that it's good for donors too. And when asked, 61 and a half percent of donors prefer to give smaller amounts more frequently than larger one-time gifts. And the question becomes, why, you know? And I think there was three things I kind of pulled out of this based on my observations, but also just from feedback uh, from different research reports is that it makes impact more accessible. And so individuals can more easily commit to something that's a lower number, you know, for example, the reason Netflix and Hulu and Spotify or Apple Music and all of these things are under $10 is because they, they know that they can get you in at a smaller amount because we, we're, we're quicker to commit to a smaller amount, but also we kind of ignore that smaller amount over a longer period of time. And so it's easier for us to commit to that. But then commitment bias comes into play where once we commit to something, naturally we typically tend to keep giving to that. So this is good for donors. They also get to feel uh, more good vibes because they're giving more frequently. It's not just giving once and then being done with it, but they're actually kind of, kind of snacking on the good vibes that come through giving, which is great. The feeling of generosity is something that your nonprofit should celebrate and that you can cultivate in your, in your supporters, that idea that you're creating opportunities for them to express their generosity um, and that has impact and kind of connection. And so it feels more good vibes. And our brain kind of prefers this. And this is kind of goes back to the first one is that we, ha we have a good understanding of kind of this idea of giving equal payments. You know, we have other things in our lives that are like our mortgage or our car payment, our insurance or our phone bill, or our cable bill, whatever it is that there's just like a monthly occurrence to this, that there's a small amount that's going to repeat over time. And our brains can kind of naturally kind of wrap our minds around that. And it feels good. It feels comfortable. And so it's good for donors is key benefit number three. The key benefit number four is that it creates predictable funding. And someone prior to the session today was saying that they have 400 monthly donors currently, which not sure the size of Sarah's organization, um, but 400 recurring donors every single month is an incredible value for your nonprofit. You know, and predictable is not a word you typically hear when you're referring to fundraising. However, recurring campaigns really flip this. And this provides you more confidence to invest, lets you plan further ahead, and ultimately grow better because you have visibility into what you will be getting in, um, even though it's not guaranteed, but it's uh, more predictable than one-time gifts. And you can plan ahead and you can lean into that as you build out your fundraising strategies. The last key benefit, and there's many more, but I kind of just tried to summarize this up for you a little bit, 
is that it's a growing preference. You know, between 2013 and 2017, recurring giving participation, or sorry, giving grew by 70%. And additionally, 45% of millennials, Gen X, and boomers participate in recurring giving campaigns according to research from 2018. Also, outside of the nonprofit space in our for-profit worlds, and kind of the, the services and kind of uh, habits that we have in other things that we're doing, subscriptions, this idea of like Netflix, Birchbox, Spotify, have grown by over 100% over the last five years across a variety of categories. This idea of recurring or subscriptions or kind of a membership type model is something that people are becoming more and more familiar with and actually prefer in their kind of, based on their buying behaviors or what they're um, leaning into. So these are kind of some of the five benefits that we're seeing um, coming from recurring giving and why it's a must in 2019. Increased giving, increased retention, um, it's more predictable, it's a growing preference, and it's just good for donors. And so the next question becomes is like, okay, I get it, I understand the benefits, I already saw the benefits, I'm gonna convince other people in my organization of the benefits, but how do you actually do this? Monthly giving campaigns are tough to get right and notoriously difficult to grow well. And so what we tried to do, or what I tried to do is kind of summarize some of the essentials that I've observed from organizations that are pros at monthly giving and just based on research on what are the essentials that you need to really set up and scale up your monthly giving campaign. So we, we kind of boiled this down to seven essentials. We're gonna dive into that together over the next 15 or so minutes, 20 minutes or so. So the key element number one is buy-in. And this seems very silly. <laughs> but the reason I started out with the five reasons and the elements, and then I start out with the first element or the essential for a successful monthly giving program to be buy-in. So I wanted to equip you with the reasons, but I also wanted to give you this reminder that like number one principle is that you need buy-in in your organization. And this might be from your leadership team, this might be from your board, but before you start or attempt to reignite your monthly giving program, you must first ask if there's buy-in from your leadership, which could be board or boss or organization in general? Is it a priority? And so it's one thing to say, yeah, 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 we're bought into this idea. But it's another thing to say, no, this is a priority. This is something that's going to be a key strategy of our fundraising, because that's going to be essential for it to grow. The things that we measure and the things that we focus on typically are the things that grow and change and move over time. But just adding monthly giving as another thing in your kind of rucksack of fundraising activities that you're doing is not going to get you the results that you want. You might as well just not do it. Because it is very difficult to get right and to grow and not necessarily just set bad expectations. The, the data is great to look at, but that's really kind of due to organizations making a priority, investing the resources like time and money. Because success with monthly giving is a long road. It's worth it, but you must have buy-in. So key element number one is that you must have buy-in from your organization. And if you're sitting there kind of thinking through this and you're like, I don't know if I have buy-in, that's kind of a red flag that you might wanna revisit um, and kind of say, well, is this a priority? Do we have buy-in? Do we have the resources, the time and the money to really invest in this? Is there other things that we need to deprioritize so that we can buy in to this idea of monthly giving? Those are all the types of questions that you could consider as you try to implement some of this uh, knowledge and kind of learnings that you're, you're gonna glean from today's presentation. So key element number one is you must have buy-in. So key element number two might be less familiar um, of a term because it's not necessarily used that much in fundraising, but key element number two encompasses a bunch of things and so I use this idea of packaging. And so when you're running a monthly giving program, what we see is that a lot of organizations have monthly giving options, but it's more of a side note, like a second cord or something that's not necessarily a priority or packaged in a way that it's presented and kind of the most attractive it could be for an organization's efforts. 
And so what we see is that organizations that get monthly giving right or recurring giving campaigns right is that they have clear packaging. You know, they treat their monthly giving program or their recurring giving program almost like a product in of itself or a program, even though you, know, you might have programs and services that your organization provides and that's what you're looking to fundraise for. Your monthly giving program is in some ways similar to that where it needs to have an identity, it needs to have a purpose, it needs to have value propositions. Just like Netflix or Spotify or Birchbox all have reasons that you're signing up for that. You're receiving some sort of benefit or service. The thing I learned early on when I joined the team overseeing the monthly giving program is that even though, yes, at the end of the day, this is focused on generosity, giving, fundraising, this is more like a magazine subscription where we need to inspire or influence someone to feel as though they're getting value by being a part of this. And that might be simplistic value, like they just wanna be a part of a cause or they wanna help support your organization. It also might be communal value where they're doing it because there's a communal sense to this, which is one of the other elements we'll talk about in a minute. But either way, there has to be an identity or a purpose or a value proposition as to why they should give you money on a regular basis. There has to be kind of this packaging that really presents your monthly giving program in a way that makes someone want to be a part of it. And typically what we see is that packaging that focuses on purpose over giving, and so you lead with the purpose, why are people joining this, is going to be better than just saying, oh, you can give monthly to us because it's more convenient, or hey, we would really love your support monthly because it's helpful for our organizations. You're not leading with the purpose. And so organizations that lead with the purpose of their monthly giving program um, over just the fact that it's monthly giving or recurring giving typically see higher success. Also this idea of clear identification. So there's this kind of essence to this. And I'll share some examples in a minute to kind of give some more coloring to that. There's a clear identity associated with that. Similar to how we, we've kind of been doing giving societies or membership programs um, in kind of more of like the museum and arts organization space where you become a gold member, you become something like that. That's kind of simplistic identification, but with monthly giving programs that are really successful, there's a clear identity to their monthly giving programs. Like I'm joining something, I'm becoming a part of something. And we'll kind of talk to some of those elements in just a few minutes. The other thing is aspirational, that it's inspiring. It's not just like, wow, you can give, 12 times a year automatically, that's, that's a much more transactional play where what I mean by aspirational is that there's an inspiring reason why you wanna be a part of this. There's a natural reason as to why a recurring gift makes sense for what it is. So I um, helped run kind of a, a monthly giving program where we helped support children's education and kind of providing food and shelter. And so when we asked someone to be a part of that on a monthly basis, it made sense because the needs that we were delivering, you know, kids need to eat every month, kids need to go to school every month, kids need shelter every month. So there was a natural kind of alignment between how we packaged it and what the purpose was and the fact that we were asking them for a monthly gift. Whereas if we said, hey, we're gonna build a building and we're trying to be more of a capital campaign project, hey, you should give monthly, the purpose and the frequency don't really align with that and that's gonna be a more difficult sell. And so it has to be kind of an aligned purpose with a recurring model. The last element here with packaging is that you want it to be designed to be shared. And what I mean by that is monthly giving programs that we observe that are really successful are the ones that have a clear identity that if I'm out with my friends and family or someone says, you know, hey, you know, what do you, what are you into? What are your passions? What are you excited about? I can actually use the identity like, oh, I'm a part of the front line, which is an organization that promotes the ability for people like me and you to come together and ensure that we're on the front lines of every single crisis. And so we help provide immediate support uh, relief and development, but also kind of after the crisis. And so I'm a part of the front line. So it's this idea that there's like a flag or a banner, you know, we're very natural, naturally drawn to kind of this tribal mentality where it's like, oh, you know, I'm a, 
UVA fan, go who's, um, and I'm excited about that, or I'm a, this type of person. And so packaging your giving program where it's not a transactional thing, it's actually an identity. Like I'm a part of fill in the blank is essential to when you package your monthly giving program. So let me share a few that I'm excited about, that I think give you kind of some of this, uh, a little bit more coloring to what I mean by packaging. So the first one is by an organization called Preemptive Love. So they're an organization that works on the front lines of area or conflict impacted areas around the world. And they created this monthly giving program called the Frontline. And really what they wanted to do was align their mission and their purpose, which is basically like, we want to be on the front lines in the countries that we're serving in. But we also believe that our mission's bigger than that. We want to be on the front lines, even in your communities, where we're advocating for this mindset of love anyway and regardless. And so they wanted to create this monthly giving program that felt as though it, mean, it meant more than just giving monthly. They didn't just add a checkbox to their donation page. They said, you know, we want to be on the front lines and we want you to join us on the front lines. You physically can't be on the front lines in, you know, Syria or Iraq or other countries that they live, on, live in, but we want you to be a part of that. So it was a conceptualization of their purpose that then justified why it was a monthly commitment. It was brilliantly designed, incredibly inspirational, um, and you can kind of check out that. And you know, they've had almost 5,000 people join in 41 countries with the average donation of $43. This idea is that they're bringing people together and saying, hey, we're on the front lines. And this is kind of what I mean by this idea of identification and values and purpose alignment. And it's an incredible example. The second example, which is maybe, uh, more popular or referred to often, but I think they do such a great job, it's worth bringing up because there's a lot of lessons that we can learn from how they structured their monthly giving program to kind of inspire how you might structure yours and kind of package your monthly giving program in a way that makes a lot of sense. And so Charity Water is an organization that provides clean water to people all around the world. They want to end the water crisis. And so they create this, or this um, monthly giving program called The Spring. And so basically what they realized is that they were building mostly like brick and mortar projects so people could help contribute to provide water to individuals. But water wells break, there's other things that go on and providing water is an ongoing process. There's a lot of other things that are necessary to make sure that water is always flowing. And so again, they align this idea of a monthly giving program, The Spring, the Spring keeping water flowing at all times with the purpose, but also that purpose really aligned with this idea of monthly giving. It made sense that I would give monthly to keep the water running. And they also did this great job of giving an identification, calling it the spring. I can go out on a Friday night or I can talk to my friends and say, I'm a part of the spring. You know, it's a monthly giving program where together with 37,761 other people, we provide and ensure that there's clean water every single day of the year in the communities that most are impacted by the water, worldwide, worldwide water crisis. So again, this clear identification, they're making it about purpose, they're aligning that purpose with this idea of a monthly giving program, and they've packaged this beautifully in a way that makes sense and makes someone wanna join. And they treat it like a product where it's like, they're, you're joining this, you're subscribing to this idea in this program. And that's where monthly giving programs are gonna be really extremely successful. The last one, which is a program that I had the privilege of being um, a part of at the initiation or kind of the beginning stages where we were transitioning from a simple like check the box to give monthly to more of this idea of how can we package our monthly giving program in a way it was with the Adventure Project. Um, they've grown this and done incredible work since I was there, so I'm not taking any credit for this. But I, I'm thankful that I was able to be a part of some of the initial discussions on this because I saw some of the thinking that went into why this ended up in the way or the way it, it was designed. And so the Adventure Project Society is an organization that invests in providing jobs because they feel like jobs are the best way to provide uh, uh, dignity, but also is what people want. People want a good job so that they can care uh, for their families, their communities, and the other environments that they were, they were given and stewarding. And so we created this monthly giving program called The Collective. And what we wanted to do 
was signal to our monthly givers or those that might be considering to be a monthly giver that if you joined on a monthly basis, we would collectively help fund training programs that would get you know, women in Kenya, women in Uganda, women in Haiti jobs, real job training. But it was a collective effort. You know, it's expensive to train someone to be uh, equipped with the skills they need to effectively, you know, make enough money so that they can serve their families, even in impoverished communities around the world or communities that are you know, without or hindered by just economic kind of challenges. And so we wanted to invite people to be a part of the collective. And again, it was this idea that every single month, collectively, we were going to help fund the training of maybe one woman, maybe 10 women. But as we grew, as we continued to give more, as more people joined the collective, we could have a bigger impact and train more and more women um, and provide them with jobs so that they could provide for their families and the communities they served. And so it's just this incredible idea that we're all in this together and we're coming together to give monthly. You'll see your impact and be better together. When you give 15 per month or $1,500 collectively, we're creating sustainable impact that scales. And additionally, they provide other perks and stuff. But this idea is that they package this. We package this in a way that made sense. So when we went out and promoted it, it was something that sounded really interesting. Uh, it aligned with the purpose and was really helpful to bring people together to be a part of something. Another one that um, it wasn't actually implemented and I couldn't find the pictures because it's not fully put together is a program where there's, it's a mentorship program that provides uh, children in schools with just mentorship and this idea that mentorship through school is really helpful to help um, keep people, kids accountable, but also just to show them a uh, pass forward. And as we're kind of playing around with that idea, it's like, what could their monthly giving program be? How could they really get ongoing giving? Um, and this idea of like a brotherhood, because it, it was a mentor to young boys. And so it was like, how could you have this brotherhood or this kind of connection? Um, and they were just playing around with different things. But that's how you can kind of apply these ideas where you're packaging it in a way that makes sense and aligns with the purpose of you and your organization. And this works across different industries. I spent a lot of time in international humanitarian work. So a lot of these examples are from that, but it still showcases the difference, uh, the different ideas, you know, where Charity Water is providing ongoing water. So they had this idea of a spring and people coming together with the Adventure Projects providing job training and helping people get hired. They encompass it in that. Um, or preemptive love is really just providing relief and development. And so depending on whether it's like a physical asset that needs ongoing maintenance and support, or it's like there's a people that you're serving, like the Adventure Project, or maybe it's, you know, you're just doing ongoing work, but you create a conceptualization of that and invite people to be a part of that. So that's packaging. Packaging is probably this is the second most important thing for a monthly giving program to be successful. And I think it's the thing that will help elevate your current monthly giving program. So for those that said, hey, we have a monthly giving program, um, but yeah, it's just lackluster or just kind of flatlined. This idea between buy-in, which is element number one, and packaging, Getting those two things right, you're 50% of the way there to be able to begin really cultivating growth behind your monthly giving program. So let's dive into element key element number three so that we can pace through this. Key element number three is this idea of community. One thing that we know um, through research, but also just feedback and kind of industry uh, standards, especially when you look at uh, different giving reports is that today's supporter wants to be a part of not merely give to the causes that are most important to them. And so successful monthly giving programs have this baked into their core and incorporate things like social proof and messages like together we versus you can. So in, instead of making it a one-to-one -one thing, which is more of kind of a, a traditional fundraising approach and something that we promote here when you're doing direct fundraising to a together we, because you're inviting someone to be a part of a community of people that are doing something together. And that's where you're gonna be able to drive growth and ultimately like word of mouth because you're creating belonging and ownership where I can now invite other people in. And when we look at the connected economy, we know that there's an incredible value in the influence I have over others to support causes. Because people are, I think it's 85% of people would rather be invited to support a charity by a friend, family, or like-minded kind of member 
uh, rather than a charity itself. And so by creating community, you create belonging, but also ownership and kind of en encompass this idea that people can come and be a part of something. Uh, Matt Scott, who's the CEO at Cosm Cosmic, uh, shared that ways that you can do this with your monthly giving program is you can host events for monthly donors, whether this is a digital event, if you're like a national or a global organization, or maybe physical events, to bring people together so they can actually see others that are part of it, this program. You can host uh, webinars or virtual meetups. You can actually showcase members of the community, people that are actually monthly donors, and you can showcase their profile, why they're a part of it, and actually send that out to other members of the community to promote that there's people, names, and faces behind this bigger thing. So even though you have the packaging right, you still kind of showcase this idea that there's people a part of this, there's multiple people a part of that. This is a communal effort, and that's a really great way to grow. Um, the last thing that Matt suggested was create you know, a Facebook group or some other type of community group that people can join and be a part of. And so that's what the Preemptive Love does. They say you can join, it, join an exclusive frontline Facebook group for monthly sponsors, where people are coming together, they're actually seeing others, they're connecting with them. And so people aren't only just giving to this, you're actually building bridges and connecting those people. So you're providing two folds of value, providing social kind of identification and community, and you're also giving them the opportunity to be generous, and ultimately to be a part of something that's bigger than them. And so Rob kind of, and I mentioned this already, says, you know, supporters are hyper-connected, live inside personal feeds, discover and support causes recommended by their friends, desire to be a part of the change, not merely give to it. And embedding this idea of community into your monthly giving programs is essential to be able to grow a monthly giving program in today's connected economy because it starts bridging the gaps between what supporters want, what your organization is trying to do, and then also taps in to help you grow by infusing word of natural word of mouth, word of mouth tendencies into your program, which is gonna help you scale up um, your program over time. And again, this is a long game, this is an overnight success. But making sure you do this is key. So key element number four, we're gonna kind of blaze through this, um, is monthly giving must be tied directly to collective impact and showcased often. So we already talked a little bit about this on how you're per you need to lead with purpose, and that needs to make sense. And so typically this needs to be less than just, hey, we need to keep the lights on and support this great institution that we have in our local community that provides X, Y, and Z services. You need to focus on the outcomes of your work and then showcase that and lead with that. So key element of monthly giving has to be impact focused. It can't just be like support our organization monthly. The organizations that are doing this successfully lead with the cause over organization. They also share stories of how that impact is going to kind of make a difference and who that's making a difference for or communities or whatever the stories are that you have and not just showcasing stats that, you know, if we get monthly giving, we're going to be able to increase our outputs by 30%. Like no one really, people care about that. But what they really care about is the story of someone that's a part of that 30% so that they can visualize this and really relate and have more empathy for the outcomes of that and want to be a part of it. They can also see themselves as contributing to helping that story become a reality. And it's also designed to be shared. So stories, impact-focused things, encourage supporters, encourage members or sponsors or however you position who these monthly donors are or recurring donors are to actually share out these stories. Stats are not something that I want to share out with my friends and family when I'm going on spring break next week and I'm visiting you know, multiple sets of family members. And if I have an incredible story and I'm equipped with that to say, hey, I'm a part of this, I'm a part of the front lines. It's a monthly giving program with preemptive love who's on the front lines of this work. And they sent me this story of Samuel. And Samuel was a little boy that was impacted by the crisis that was going on in Iraq. I can tell that story and I can share that with others and I can help invite, it helps invite more people into the fold as well. So again, just making sure we're highlighting the impact or the outcome of this. So give together, gather together, go together. Watsi is another great organization that has an incredible uh, monthly giving program where they say, hey, it's all about the patients. You know, 100% of your donations funds life-changing healthcare for new Watsi crowdfunding patients every single month. And then they showcase those stories to the individuals that are a part of that. And that really pushes into key element number five, which is communications. Like any relationship, communication over time is the key to longevity. And the thing that's interesting is that 
organizations occasionally have monthly giving programs and they don't differentiate their communications, their ongoing dialogue with your supporters between whether you're a recurring or you're a one-time donor. And you must do that. You must differentiate that because you have a different relationship with them. If I'm eating at a restaurant on a weekly basis or I eat at a restaurant once last year, that restaurant has a different relationship with me and can communicate with me in different ways because my context with them is different. And also my loyalty to them is different. And so even the tone and kind of the posture that you might have in your communications is gonna be differentiated between those things. So the first and foremost is you wanna differentiate recurring and one-time donor communications. Also a lot of organizations have a 30 day or 90 day communications plan for new donors or one-time donors. With recurring donors or monthly donors, you need to implement a 12 month revolving communications plan so that you're clear on when new donors come in, this is how we cycle through, this is how we keep them engaged, this is how we continue to showcase the impact. It can't just be a welcome, thank you so much for giving monthly, we'll send you a receipt and maybe you'll get our annual report and we're just really grateful that you give to us monthly. We might send you a thank you note every six months like we do with our other donors. Monthly donors really need to be cultivated in a different way. And this is where the hard work comes in up front to think through this and to really plan this out. However, it pays dividends over time because you're replicating the same model as you continue to grow and scale your program and still having predictable and kind of uh, scalable revenue that you're getting over time. The other thing is because we're talking about this as a group of people collectively coming together to have an impact, community, those really highlighting on, um, <clears throat> sorry, number three that we talked about where you're building community, this has to be a community, is that you wanna keep your communications when you're sending them to monthly donors in a human voice, and you really wanna focus on celebrating the collective impact or outcomes that you've had um, as well. So if you look at something like WOTC, you know, they send emails on a monthly basis that says, hey, you know, Basna's treatment was a success, read the full report. And so as a monthly donor, I'm getting access to this exclusive content, but I can also now share this out and say, hey, look what I was a part of. And that naturally, by word of mouth, invites other people to be a part of this as well. Charity Water does a great job at this as well, where they tell stories, but they said the good news is that supporters like you has helped make sure that this point of contention or conflict has changed. You know, when we met them, we were able to help them because of you, because of this ongoing support. We had the privilege to be able to serve them in a way that we wanted to. And so communications, exclusive communications for your monthly donors um, is essential um, as you look to grow and scale this up. And it also actually helps you acquire new monthly donors when done well. Key element number six is to make sure that you have a retention plan. And not a retention plan when donors begin to fall, or monthly donors begin to cancel or to not renew, but having a retention plan up front. You really want to obsess over retention. You want to be proactive and ensure you measure retention month to month. You review donor and revenue churn. So every monthly donor that you have, unless it's a default amount that they're giving, isn't weighted equally. So if you're losing less donors, but maybe they're the donors that are giving you more on a monthly basis, that's something you should be able to know and track. You also wanna be, be able to identify moments of high attrition. So for example, when I was working at, on a monthly giving program, we realized that month nine, we kept losing people. Like there was just a, a bigger drop off at month nine. And we couldn't really figure out why, but what we tried to do was that at month seven, we wanted to get ahead of the curve because we, we would send com some communication in the first three months, and then we'd come back and send them something at month six, and then we'd send them something at usually month 12, but for some reason, getting from month six to month 12 wasn't happening, and they were dropping off at month nine. And so we tried to figure out how we could refactor our communications plan so that we were catching people before they were dropping off, and that helped us increase retention rates and continue to move those needles. So you really want to be able to monitor where those kind of dark spots are in your retention. So how long are people staying along with you and where are they dropping off and why? And if you can't figure it out, try to do some things so that you're catching people ahead of time. The other thing you wanna do is you wanna modern patterns of success, monitor patterns of success. So if you have a segment of donors or supporters that you acquired to be monthly donors and they've just been crushing it, you've kept them for four years, 
it's good to ask them to figure out what's going on and kind of see how you can help replicate that in some of your other supporters. Maybe it's because you acquired them in a certain venue. Maybe you did something special for them. Maybe they just came in at a specific time of the year. And so really looking through some of those data points so that you can see which ones you could try to um, model for your other supporters is really positive and really it can be a really effective way to increase your retention. And one thing that I saw is that when I came into the monthly giving program, um, we had a certain percentage of, of a number of monthly donors. Three years later, we heavily, heavily focused over three years just on retention we had, I believe, 20% less monthly donors just because we had a retention problem. Like we were losing, our bucket had a big hole in it and we were losing a ton of donors on a regular basis. Um, and so we had to fix that. But, so we lost 20% of our monthly donors, even though we were acquiring new ones, we just couldn't catch up because our retention problem was, was really bad. But by the end of three years, even though we had 20% less monthly donors, we were still raising more money because we had higher quality monthly donors and our monthly donors were giving to us on a more regular basis and more consistently because we specifically focused on retention and then ultimately cultivation. So how could we get our monthly donors to actually give us more? And so that's a key part of growing and scaling up your monthly giving programs. The last element I'll share here is this idea of feedback. So monthly giving programs are living campaigns. They're not just one-time campaigns or one-time events like many other things you might do in fundraising. And so you should plan to gather feedback and iterate often. One thing I recommend is that you wanna collect feedback monthly from different segments. So not that you're surveying or asking for feedback from all of your monthly donors every single month, but getting a little bit of feedback every single month from different segments and then rotating that th them through um, in our case, we asked each monthly donor every six months for feedback, and so, but still, we were doing that on a monthly basis, and so we were segmenting different, se or we were surveying and asking for feedback from different segments of our monthly donor base. Um, this is going to give you insights on a monthly basis, so you can iterate faster, and this is going to allow you to reevaluate your strategy for acquisition. Like, how are you acquiring monthly donors? Like. Why are people signing up? Like, where did they hear about this? So maybe you can double down or maybe, you know, divest in something that's not working for acquisition. You can also evaluate how well you're retaining supporters. Like, what are they seeing as like, oh man, I'm just so excited that I was able to connect with other supporters as a part of this monthly program. So those are things that you can learn. And ultimately cultivation. So as supporters give you more money or less money on a monthly basis, like what's, what's, what's that about? What made someone upgrade their giving? What made them decrease? And again, you're, that feedback is gonna be really helpful for you to continue to kind of feed and grow the monthly program really well. And so that's element number seven. And I, I didn't include this originally, but I added a bonus element number eight. And that's really kind of where we're gonna wrap up today. And so we really talked about this idea of there was five reason, there was five, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there was five reasons why monthly giving is valuable. And there was seven key elements of successful campaigns. There's actually an eight, because outside of your monthly giving program and how you design it and how you think about retention and all of that, is the technology you use to actually power this. And so to really grow a monthly giving campaign successfully, it requires you to have the right tools and support to really scale this up with ease. You know, you need something that has easy setup and integrates with your website that you can, so you can collect monthly donors. It's not a manual process or something you're having, having to have your finance person spend eight hours a month on to really like receipt people and change things up or to reach out to people and say, hey, like, can you update your thing? It's really, it can be a huge hassle and really a huge cost center if you don't have the right technology. You also want to have a seamless experience. So a lot of organizations have outdated donation experiences where they have no comparison to the Amazons of the world and the other parts, like the other experiences that your, your supporters now are going through. Like I can order a car on my phone or I can check out on Amazon with one click. If they then come to you and are trying to sign up for monthly giving and they just, they can't, or it's very difficult, you're getting compared to those experiences. And so you really need something that offers a seamless experience for your donors. And then something just has simple back office management so that this isn't 
some clunky thing that you don't have visibility into, but something that you can really see and visibly monitor. When I'm talking about monitoring retention, that requires you to have the data you need to be able to see all of that. You also want something that has automation to save you time, whether it's automated receipts or automatically logging donations. You wanna have visibility and ownership over all your donor data. You wanna have smart card updates so when someone's credit card fails because it expired, you want your system to help you go update that because there's services out there that provide that level of specification. Notifications, recovery emails. So when someone's card expires and we can't update it automatically, you know, we send out an email. And this is all things that we've embedded into the Cosbox platform, um, along with hands-on help and straightforward support documentation so that we can help you really manage this monthly giving program. Because it's not just having the right knowledge that's also having the right tools and support so that you can implement that well. So if you're considering monthly giving and you don't have a tool or you don't have a tool that you're happy with or you are thinking about some of these things and you're like, wow, our system doesn't do smart card updates or notify us when a donor's card doesn't go through. Like I don't really have visibility into our monthly donors. I'm not even sure if Sally or John gave. I don't know what our churn is each month. Um, that's what we've built the Cosvox platform for. And so even though we talked about why monthly giving is important, we talked about the key elements of monthly giving, I thought it was necessary for us to say, this is how you actually implement this. You know, This is how you can actually implement this with technology. So I asked uh, Rob, who's our CEO here at Cosvox, and he's one of the co-founders, to really come on and give kind of like a 10 minute, 15 minute demo that really overviews how you can set up and grow your monthly giving campaigns um, and much of your other digital fundraising with Cosvox. And so Rob, I believe you've joined us now and I'd love for you to kind of just share how we can, how Cosvox really supports the implementation of a monthly giving program, Rob. Yeah, absolutely. You know, monthly giving is so important. Um, and as you said, it's, you know, one of the biggest growing trends when it comes to fundraising for nonprofits. And the reason why is because you can actually predict how much revenue you're gonna get they can actually see and engage donors in a different way than just one time. And then from there, you can actually run your fundraising in a way where it's not just about scrambling around for year end fundraising or scrambling around for the next gala or the next event. It's actually something that allows you to run your fundraising and run your nonprofit in a way that helps more people and creates more impact. So I only have just a few minutes, as Noah mentioned. So what I want to do is kind of show you what the Cosmox platform can do to help you grow your monthly recurring giving. You know, a lot of times when you're thinking about sustainer giving or recurring giving, you might have a donate button or donation page on your website already, um, and it has this recurring give option. You know, I do think that that's the baseline for recurring giving, but that's not the end all, nor is it really taking advantage of the potential for recurring giving. So. I just want to show you just about two or three different things and how we can help you over here at Cosbox to really scale up and do your monthly recurring giving differently as well as more effectively to transform your fundraising function. So at a baseline over here, what Cosbox can help you do as a fundraising platform and as a fundraising tool is that if you don't have a donation page or if you're still stuck just using a PayPal donate button, you can actually use Cosbox to power your baseline website donations. So for example, when a donor clicks on this green donate button over here on this website, this donation form is actually powered by the Cosvox platform. What that means is that it's not some clunky yellow PayPal button, nor is it being redirected to a third party page which doesn't look like a website that isn't inspiration, doesn't fit the packaging um, that you've done for your recurring giving. It's actually something that's branded to your organization that makes you look like a hero when it comes to fundraising. So for example, we have the logo here that's branded to your organization, but also there you have just more ability to customize the suggested levels of giving. So not only one-time donations over here, but also you can customize and make it a monthly recurring donation. So if you don't have a, a donate button or if you're just using one-time donations, Cosvox is the easy way for you to plug in monthly recurring giving. In addition to that, what we see, you know, when I see, uh, when I look at other nonprofits donation pages, is that you guys are really just missing a huge opportunity when it comes to engaging your community. So for example, 
uh, this organization here, in, instead of just listing the suggested levels of giving with donation amounts, is actually tying those suggested levels of giving with some type of impact description so that donors really know why they should give you $100 a month or $500 a month. So you can easily plug this in, easily use it on Cosvox in order to drive more recurring giving. Our website donation pages, you can make it uh, an optional monthly recurring donation, or you can even make it something that's mandatory. So this is great because as you're running multiple types of recurring giving initiatives, recurring giving campaigns, you may wanna have a specific donation page and a specific monthly recurring page for each audience. Each audience has a different story. Each audience is different. Um, and each audience needs to be um, uh, compelled in a specific way. This also helps you measure the performance of each recurring uh, donation page. Another way you can use Cosvox, let's say you have donation pages or you're implementing Cosvox recurring giving, is you can e even use our campaign sites in our peer-to-peer -peer giving and tie the concept of community-driven fundraising with monthly recurring giving. This not only allows you to increase monthly recurring givers, but also helps you reach more new prospects. So for example, this is Jewish Voice for Peace. Uh, they're having a student member campaign. Uh, so what's great about this is not only are they using these individual personal fundraising pages over here, does that include a custom story with a video and a progress bar and CTAs that are persistent um, this is something that normally on Cosvox helps you raise twice as much because you're leveraging somebody else's audience, somebody else's social followers and email addresses in order to acquire additional donors. But what, what's great about this is that Maya, for example, she's running this as a monthly uh, recurring option as well. So when someone clicks on donate, not only are they able to donate one time when it comes to this peer-to-peer -peer, uh, personal fundraising page, but also they're able to make it a monthly recurring donation. Uh, this way you can turn your audience, your board members, your volunteers, your alumni, your junior advisory board, whoever it is, even your corporate sponsors, you can turn them into monthly recurring fundraising advocates for you. So people can go in, create these personal pages, and then as their audience sees this, they can make a monthly recurring donation in order to help you increase your giving. This way you're tying the concept of community with the concept of monthly recurring giving. Um, on the back end over here at Cosvox, we help you manage this whole process. So as Noah mentioned, there's a lot of different ways and a lot of different elements to run monthly recurring giving. Well, we make it easy and simple for you to run all your fundraising, all your different types of monthly recurring giving on Cosvox. Included with that is just a dashboard so you can see how how much you raise when it comes to monthly recurring giving. Included with that is a fundraising database and a fundraising CRM that helps you easily see, for example, you know, who are your monthly recurring donors, as well as you can see their lifetime value, their contact info, and even their monthly recurring giving history, as well as what pages they donated on, how much they donated. All that's wrapped into Cosvox, so you have all this data in just one place. Uh, when it comes to managing these donations, your donors on Cosvox also have their own interface. So instead of having to bug you about changing your monthly recurring donation or upgrading it, they can just do it themselves. They have an own easy interface, secure, where they can easily log in and get receipts, see history, as well as change the monthly recurring donations. Um, on Cosvox, it's super easy as well. So if you wanted to set up a monthly recurring donation page, for example, uh, we have this pre-populated for you. So instead of having to bug your IT person, your developer, you, you can just go into here. You can select the monthly recurring giving option here. And you can just fill out a title. And as I speed through this, you can easily see just how easy it is uh, just to set this up. So let me just put in some default content over here. And then we take you into an easy setup process where you can easily just set up your monthly recurring giving. You know, there's no coding required here. You can set up different tiers for your monthly recurring donations. Um, everything is pre-populated for you so that you can speed through this process. Included with that is we automate your back office. So as you're getting these monthly recurring donations, instead of you having to send out donation receipts 
to all of your individual monthly recurring donors, you, know, you can just put in a template, then our system handles that receiving for you. So this will save you at least two hours of time, three hours of time each single month, instead of having to do it manually. On your donation pages over here, we give you a live preview so you can see what it looks like on different devices, including mobile. And after that, if you want to embed it on your site, you can easily do this. And the very last step is for you just to confirm this and that's it. Now, once you're done with this, then you do have a monthly recurring donation page, which you can easily see on your website or easily see online. Uh, now we do have a ton of other features on monthly recurring giving. So if you do have any additional questions, what I do recommend that you do is you can just go to causevox.com over here. On the upper right hand side, you can click on request a demo or on the orange button over here, you can click on get a demo. And we'll be happy to walk you through monthly recurring giving on Causevox, just how easy it is, how much time will save you, as well as just share a few fundraising ideas in terms of how you can implement this for your organization in order to grow your giving with less effort and less time this year. So I wanna hand it back to Noah for some additional insights on monthly recurring giving. Thanks so much, Rob, for really giving that kind of overview on how you can actually take what we talked about today and put it into action in your organization, but also streamline it and make it not something that's stressful or overbearing on your limited time already that you have as an organization so that you can invest more on some of the elements like we talked about, like gathering feedback, sharing communication or stories through communication, or even just focusing in on how you can help better build community amongst your monthly supporters. So just as a quick recap, these are the eight elements that are essential if you're looking to grow or to start and grow a, pro, a monthly giving program like many of the organizations that we shared and the ones that are seeing huge dividends, raising millions of dollars every single year, hundreds of thousand dollars on a monthly basis. Maybe it's only 10 or 15 or $35,000 over a course of a year for your organization. That's incredible to see the outcome that monthly giving has on the funds you're able to raise, but also on the longevity of the relationships you're able to have with your supporters. It's a huge, re um, these are the elements that we found that are essential. Buy-in, packaging, community, impact focus, communications, retention, feedback, and technology. And so if anyone has any questions, I know we're a little bit over time, I'm happy to stick around and answer that. You can drop them in the questions pane. And I'm just grateful that so many of you joined us. If you have any other questions about monthly giving, you can reach out to me at noah at cosvox.com or you can go to cosvox.com and click on request a demo or start a conversation with us and we'd be happy to talk about how you can actually implement monthly giving using Cosvox's platforms. If you have any questions, feel free to drop that in the questions pane and we'll spend the next few minutes really just diving into your questions. I'll also be sending out a recording of today's presentation along with the slides and you'll receive those later this afternoon, early tomorrow morning. And so if you have any other questions that you didn't get to ask here, you can just reply to that email and I'd be happy to chat with you further. Thanks so much and enjoy your guys' afternoons. Like I said, I'm gonna stick around for a few more questions, but hope everyone else has a great rest of their day. A few questions we have is someone is asking, uh, they said, you mentioned communicating regularly with this segment of your donors. How regularly? Every month, quarterly? So one thing that I've seen is that it really depends. I've tried both and found that more frequent communications is better. However, it's something you'll definitely want to test with your specific audience because your audience might differ in how much communication they, they would like, um, or it may be something that the context of the work that you're doing, it would provide better updates if you were doing quarterly updates. The thing that you don't want to get too far away from is losing connection with your supporters so that if 
regular circumstances happen where maybe their payment method fails or they had to get a new credit card or there's an expiration date that we can't automatically update through like Cosvox's system or whatever system you're using, they're less likely to follow up on renewing that commitment with you if they don't have that connection or haven't had a recent touch point. And so you wanna have enough touch points to satisfy the connection with the audience, but also know that you should test different things to see what's best for you and your audience. Hopefully that's helpful. Hey, Julie, Julie's asking, um, they don't have a current monthly giving program, but do, does Cosvox help design and structure a new program or just teach the technology on the back end? So we have the technology that really helps you easily kind of power your campaigns once you build it up. And we provide best practices and lessons like we did today to help you kind of structure that. Also with all of our Cosvox plans on our standard and up plans, we provide one-on-one -on -one kind of uh, coaching and consulting as it relates to helping you ensure that your fundraising is successful. So it's not like we're an agency where we'll do it for you, but we'll kind of work alongside with you, Julie, and help you think through how you could structure a monthly giving program for your context and your organization, and then also provide you the tools to be able to implement that. So it's not just technical support, it's also kind of strategy and overarching thinking on how you can really tap into the power of monthly giving, or even like peer-to-peer, peer-to-peer events, the other ways that you can increase your online giving through our platform. There's a lot of different things that our team will work alongside you with, or work alongside you on as you kind of think through some of those things. So Julia, hopefully that's helpful. And um, if you'd like, just make it, or reach out to us by email and I can schedule more time for us to sit down and talk with you about your organization circumstance and how Cosbox can help. So I'll look forward to that. Thanks, Julie. So Ashley says, what are the monthly rates to use Cosvox's platform? So Ashley, great question. We have uh, pricing that's really designed for any type of organization. We have a new basic plan, which doesn't cost anything to start. And you can run your monthly giving program using that basic plan, um, which is a great option for smaller organizations up till you have 100 contacts. And so that's a great option for just getting started. Um, but we also have other paid plans that really come along with that extra support. We're not just providing you comprehensive tools to do event registration, crowdfunding, peer-to-peer, -peer, monthly giving, but you're also getting access to our hands-on help and kind of expert support that's really gonna help you scale up your online fundraising. So actually what I would recommend, just so that you can kind of explore it further, is going and requesting a demo or shooting me an email at noah at cosvox.com and we can kind of talk through what might be best for you and your organization, whether it's the free plan, the basic plan, or one of our other plans that come along with more, at, more features and also uh, that hands-on support that we mentioned. Absolutely, Ashley, happy to help. Hey, Mike. Mike says, uh, how do you suggest making the most of getting corporate matches for recurring donations? It seems like it might be easier to get double and and getting recurring donations. Does Cosvox handle both getting corporate matches for recurring donations? Uh, great question, Mike. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. So obviously you have the like matching indexes where someone gives and if their employee matches that, you can kind of send them the information to be able to do that. So we would handle the, uh, the monthly giving from the supporter, but actually sending in that documentation is something the employee would have to do through their employer to make sure that that was done properly and up to kind of the like the corporate um, policies on how to actually issue that gift. However, once you receive that gift, you would be able to add that as a manual donation um, in Cosvox's platform. So it's still attributed um, as a contribution from the organization. And you could even tie it to uh, the, the employee that actually earned that corporate match. Another thing on this, Mike, I don't think this is what you're asking, but I think it's really helpful, is that we've also seen in organizations go out and get like corporate sponsorships or matches, like matching gifts. So let's say you went out and said, you know, hey, A, B, and C Corp is gonna give us 
And actually what they do is instead of saying, hey, just give us a one-time gift of $20,000, we actually ask them if we can repurpose their ABC Corporation 20,000 to actually use as a challenge to get people to sign up for monthly giving. So if you look at some successful nonprofits and how they do, they do little campaigns where basically let's say it's the month of September for where 30 days, anyone who signs up for a monthly gift, their first month, their first three months would actually be doubled by that sponsor that's coming alongside. So similar to how you might use a matching gift for like a capital campaign or a Giving Tuesday campaign, you can also use matching gifts or corporate donations to also enhance your monthly giving acquisition um, in some really creative ways. So definitely consider that as you look to grow as well. Well, it looks like that's all the questions that have circulated in. I want to make sure um, I thank everyone again for being a part of today's presentation. And like I mentioned, we will be sending out the recording of today's presentation early tomorrow morning. So if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. And until then, I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for attending Cosvox's webinar on monthly giving. I'll talk to you soon.